the most important thing and the most shocking thing is that Nigerian people seem to be very scared. If you want change, if you want to move from point A to point B, you must leave your comfort zone. It is because President Mohamed Buhari and the National Assembly feel they have conquered the Nigerian people. That is why the president and the parliament is now dishing out all sorts of political and economic abracadabra because they know the people cannot do anything. You want good governance? You don't want to march on the street. You don't want to stand and speak for what you believe will be right for you, your generation, your children, and everybody. How did the parliament, in less than one hour, shock the whole world and approve $22.7 billion in foreign loan, and on the same day, approve $5.5 billion in foreign loan for President Mohamed Buhari? I, and let me say this very clear. This proposal for $22.7 billion was brought under uh, Bukola Saraki and Dogora leadership of the parliament. They asked government for details of this uh, borrowing plan, including the project, how viable are they? The president couldn't meet up with the demands of the parliament. It was rejected. And now they have brought in Ahmed Lawan, just like we always say, that they brought them in to act as political hallelujah boys. If not, tell me the reason why Nigerians were waiting to see the Senate you know, discuss robustly the issue of borrowing $5.5 billion. Only for Nigerians to wake up and now see that they have smuggled in $22.7 billion so that Nigerian people will not know. Before you know it, they say they have approved it. In less than one hour, both the Senate and the reps. And this recklessness is so painful in the sense that this is a government that is going about borrowing money, you know, junketing from one street in China to IMF boardroom, asking for loans. Now, when you borrow $22.7 billion, it is shocking that inside that borrowing plan, $500 million will go to uh, renovation of NTA. What kind of rascality is that? You say you don't have money. You say the republic is broke. We're facing an, a, a health and economic uh, problem. And then you go and borrow money that you don't even have the resources to repay back. And then you waste it on, on repairing NTA that is not commercially viable because the uh, only government views. And not only that, you're going to spend part of those money on so-called digitalization of data of EFCC and the National Identity Management Commission with over 70 billion. Is this what Nigeria needs at this particular moment? And then the painful part of it to show you that the parliament has been highly, poly and po uh, pol highly compromised politically. The parliament is getting 27 billion naira to renovate the National Assembly. Ask me, you reduce the budget of health. In this period of health emergency, you can see how the government is thinking. You need to, you need to, you need to understand how Buhari and the Senate and Red people are thinking. You reduce the budget of the health ministry, which is very important at this particular moment that will have health emergency. And when you reduce the budget of health, what did you do? You allow the Senate to go and take 27 billion naira uh, to go and renovate the chambers of the National Assembly. Of what use is that? Is the, has the place decayed? The place is still very strong and they have yearly maintenance fee that they have been spending in the last 10, 15 years. So you can see that the president does not understand the reality on the ground. He is still on, a, on an economic reckless spending. Because if the president is not reckless in terms of spending, there will be no justification to be begging for loans on the street of China and boardroom of IMF only for you to get the loan in this time of hardship and you take 200 billion to repay NCA. And then you take over 70 billion to, to match the data of uh, EFCC and the National Identity Management uh, Commission. Then you take 27 billion and give Ahmed Lawan and Femi Bajamamla for them to repay the National Assembly. So you can see that it was because the president allowed the parliament to get away with a frivolous uh, 27 billion renovation of the National Assembly that the parliament in, one, in, in less than one hour approved a reckless borrowing plan. Not to talk about the fact that we are in court over this borrowing plan. Tomorrow, the court is supposed to start hearing on this matter. They rushed yesterday to, 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 to say they have approved it. And then in that approval, there is lopsidedness in the, in the loan itself. You have a loan that is over 11, 12 trillion. And most parts of the country, especially the southeast and part of northeast, was not captured. And these are the things that, you know, breed the, the, the sunity and national, uh, the lack of national cohesion. When you make, you know, divisive action, uh, this, thing, this loan is going to be paid by generation yet unborn, and you exclude other parts of the country arrogantly, and then go ahead because you have a group of, you know, parliamentarians who see themselves as, 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 as political 
errand boy whose job uh, errand boys whose job it is to serve dinner on the table of the executive. And I want to tell you this: Nigerians have already accepted that the president Mohammed Buhari does not have the capacity to run the country. That one is not in that. But now, what about the Senate and the Rep? When did Ahmed Lawan and uh, when the lawmakers allow Ahmed Lawan and Femba Jamembla to reduce the once vibrant National Assembly? Uh, is this not the National Assembly of uh, the likes of Okadibo, uh, Kenan Namani, the likes of uh, Galina Abba, the likes of uh, Aminu Tambo and Ihedioha, the likes of uh, Bankole? How did they reduce the House of Rep? To become a house of hallelujah, we are by anything the president have you know uh, you know uh, co concord in his dreams they approve it. This parliament has uh, approved uh, approved for Mr. President to borrow 850 billion naira from the domestic market. In it's not even up to two three weeks. This same parliament has approved for Mr. President to take 3.5 billion dollars. This is over a trillion from IMF. It's not even up to a month. This same parliament has also approved other borrowing plans that is almost close to five billion dollars. Now, yes, a day before yesterday, they now rushed and approved $5.5 billion in less than one hour, approved $22.7 billion in less than one hour. And 80% of this project that is tied to this borrowing plan that is over, over $15 trillion, none of them will be able to repay the loan. They are not economic viable. So when you borrow $22.7 billion, $5.5 billion for, 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 for consumption, and then invest in projects that some of the rail lines, some of them are not economic uh, viable. Now, instead of taking rail lines, you know, if it's rail line that goes to Kano, part of Lagos, part of Patakot, or Nichano, it's better. Then you go and build rail lines that at this particular moment of economic hardship will not be able to repay the loan. And some of these loans, they have not been able to tell Nigerians the details of the commission rate. The, 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 the moratorium they're talking about is four, five, seven years, which is very close. And then we are still going to pay almost 5% as interest rate on some of this money. So at the end of the day, Nigeria will not be able to meet up with its payment obligation. And what does that tell you? More economic problem. We're going to, the, the Naira is going to start losing value. There's going to be a lot of confusion. And that, these things are not creating jobs. And that is why you said that the president cannot do this job. But there is checks and balances, which is the parliament. How did we get to a parliament that will have a parliament that anything the president brings, the parliament pass it? And that was why we raised the objection. Like we said, Femi Bajami Amila, having been convicted by the Supreme Court of State of Georgia, that he is a man that has been indicted by, for dishonest act. Dishonest is a serious, serious offense. He's unfit for any public office. Now you sneak into this country and you get yourself to the parliament. These documents we have brought to public view. Today he's fighting opposition it's because we refuse to compromise that struggle. Because we believe we must continue to fight, even if members of House of Rep are under uh, judo or whatever, they should free themselves and do the right thing. And because we resisted the emergence of Femi on that ground, and we said the reason was very simple. The reason we gave was very simple. We said, when you have a speaker that has been indicted for dishonest act, completely convicted by the Supreme Court of State of Georgia, we, had the, we have the CTC, that having been elected speaker, that he will not have the boss to stand up against a rampaging democratic dictator like President Mohammed. Because once he do that, they are going to use his in, uh, indictment by the Supreme Court of Georgia to deal with him. Not to talk of the fact that there is an issue of perjury that we have alleged that in his form CF001, he did not feel that he had been convicted of an offense involving dishonesty. That was why we secured an arrest warrant during the time before his election. And we are still in appeal on that particular matter. But what do you get? He's constituting a panel to probe the opposition thinking that he can silence her because we oppose the, 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 the outrageous infectious disease bill. You want compulsory vaccination, you want to seize people's property, and then you pass the bill within 30 seconds. Is this place in Cruzizas of Burundi Parliament or Mugabe of, uh, of Zimbabwe Parliament where you can do all kinds of nonsense and get away with it? That's why we resisted him and he started all this uh, cock and bull uh, probe. And parliamentarians were jumping to support him while he is passing a budget a borrowing plan of $22.7 billion, $5.5 billion within hours without legislative scrutiny. They have sold the country. That is the point. The country cannot be able to meet up with this obligation. And that is the simple truth. And that is what we are saying, that inside that parliament, there are still men that have honor. Why are you keeping quiet and allowing a man that is unfit to lead you to continue to run down the image of the National Assembly, especially the House of Representatives? That parliamentarians that have courage should stand up and do everything possible to ensure 
that Bajabia Mila is disgraced out of office, including those who are singing that hallelujah. Because Nigerian people are disgusted with the Federal House of Representatives. They see them as reckless. They see them as insensitive. Because when you say the country does not have money, when you say the benchmark for the oil you have dropped, we cannot meet up our budget uh, uh, pro 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 proposal. And then you devote 27 billion to renovate the National Assembly and cut down the budget for health in this time of health emergency. That, that is legislative rascality. And that is why I say Nigerian people need to stand up. Because the problem now is the Nigerian people that is keeping quiet and allowing this group of people to continue to destroy the economic future of this great uh, country. And, and, and I must tell you this, after all the borrowing, all these borrowings I have listed, the $3.5 billion from IMF, the $5.5 billion they approved the day for yesterday, the $22.7 billion, the $850 billion naira from the domestic market, the earlier $3.5 billion. Now, we now add the issue of the Abacha loot that they said they recovered. The recovery by the EFCs they said that is in trillion. Then you ask yourself, where have these money been applied to? Why is it that there are still poverty issues in the land? Why is it that there are still insecurity? Why is it that the soldiers that are still fighting in Bologna and Medugri do not have the equipment? You saw the video that is going viral that, that they are complaining. They don't have this, the, the necessary weapon to fight. Boko Haram members are ambushing them. So in that case, we are sending our fine officers to just go and, and, and be killed for nothing. So you ask yourself, where is the money meant for provision of security equipment going into? How come the soldiers do not have sophisticated equipment to query the activities of not just the Boko Haram, but the bandit that is ravaging every part of the country today look at a man that is president his home state castina have been taken over by bandits how do you trust him such a man with leadership because under section 14 of the constitution the primary responsibility of governance is protection of lives and property the question is has mr president been able to protect lives and property the flanny headsman issue is still going uh, recording left right and center people are being murdered and killed in their sleep look at what is happening in southern kaduna men and women are raped and killed every day what has the president done and then we keep saying that the body language makes it look like you are encouraging these bandits, these outlaws of the underworld to continue to men, rape and destroy our people. How can a man be so wicked that you cannot fulfill the basic responsibility of governance which is to protect lives and property and which, for which people are paying tax and maintaining you? Because you are not doing anything for the people. It is the people that are elected you. It is the people that are paying you tax. And you are living very well, making new dresses every day. But just give them protection of lives and property. You cannot. And human beings will be defending that because we want to reduce everything on the altar of party politics, religion, and ethnicity. That is why the level they have reduced Nigeria to. They have, first of all, made the people so poor that the people can go first. Once you speak up, they find one charge or the other to just rope you and silence you. So that is why I'm saying that for us to make progress from now is for the people to rise up and start demanding for answers against their parliamentarians, from their parliamentarians, and against the government they elected in place. To stand up for you to have change, you must move from a particular spot. You can't just get it. So that is the problem. And then, like, I, like, like I said before, if nothing is done urgently, not only that the country will completely crash, because uh, economically, because Nigeria is already dancing on, on, you know, to, to, to that uh, part of political and economic attitudes. Then when they crash, there's going to be social unrest. There's going to be violence everywhere. Because one, there is hunger, there is distrust. The, people, the citizens don't trust the government again. There is, there is insecurity left, right and center. And the audacity of the bandit, whether you call them felony headsmen, whether you call them uh, uh, killers from, uh, from uh, Libya, the point is that there is a group of blood suckers you know, people who are so heartless, who goes from one house to the other, raping, killing, murdering every night, and the president has not done anything, including from Castina, where he comes from, where over five, seven, eight local government have been fully taken over by the bandits. How did Nigeria get to a point where bandits to move in group of 100, 200 without nothing, and it's happening to them? So on the issue of security upon which he, he, he campaigned, he failed woefully. Rather, he was in the security situation of the country that we cannot sleep with two eyes closed. On the issue of corruption, he saw how he bastardized the fight against corruption. He was so selective that even people under him could not even see what they were doing. Because possibly, maybe he is incompetent to know that people under him are very, very highly corrupt. Now, you see the issue of uh, economy. The economy is in complete tatters. That is why the president is on the street of China, begging for every available foreign loan. He's inside the boardroom of IMF, begging for every available loan. But the question is, when he gets this loan, what is he going to use this loan to do? 27 billion to Femi Bajamemila and I'm allowing to renovate National Assembly. And President Mohammed Bari say he's a man of honor. That's our own nonsense when you say that. Because you give 27 billion in a time of the serious economic emergency. When there is poverty, when there is drop in oil price, when there is health challenges, you give 27 billion to renovate a building that is standing strong. And then you slash the budget of health. 
you can see the priority. It's large budget of health and education that is very important to the future of this great country. But you give some group of people because they are proven everything you want, like, like people who are in uh, uh, Hallelujah, singing Hallelujah. Now, at the end of the day, you give them 27 billion to go and use to renovate a place that is not you know, needed, there's nothing urgent about it, the place is very good. Then you go and give $500 million from this hard earned money to Lion Mohammed to be able to main, uh, renovate NTA. I think, the, as long as I'm concerned, the government has collapsed. The country is dancing the last dance, and if something is not done urgently, Nigeria is going to be in pieces.